How's it, how's it? Books in photography. Oh, there are many, many books. A lot of them are simply tutorials, lighting guides, you know, this sort of thing. But there are books that I feel every photographer should absolutely read. Anybody who's watched the channel for any amount of time will realize that this guy here, Joel Meyerwitz, and this is not one of his photography books, is a, I'm a huge favorite of him. I think he is one of the most eloquent, one of the most supportive photographers of, of, of this modern era. He talks about photography in a way that I, I wish I had just a, a tenth of, of his enthusiasm for. And he's extremely generous with his knowledge. And this particular volume here, which is called Seeing Things, isn't a book that I would initially have considered because it says a kid's guide to looking at photographs. I'm not a kid. Why would I look at photographs <laughs> like a kid does? But I bought this as a present for a friend of mine's daughter. And so I flicked through it and I went, wow. This is, this is a really good, but this is like, you should apps, I think this should be required reading. What Joel has done in this book is that he has taken various concepts. I'll just give you an idea here. The past and the present, actions and angles, the power of observation, the right moment, the blue hour, the human condition. Concepts which I, I think everybody can use within their own photography, or would, would benefit from using in their own photography and explains them in a simple way to understand. Then it goes, it's not talking about, you know, the, the decisive moment, for example, how much has been written about the decisive moment. And yet, you know, Joel's explaining it as, is, as if he would to a child. The concept here of light and happiness. Now, what's he got here? I'm going to hold this <laughs> like that, right? And there's a photograph here called by Sally Gal called Flying 2014. And this is, I'll put up there, I'll put a better picture up on the screen. And the text, I'll give you an example. It goes, if a friend asked you, did you do something interesting today? And you answered, I looked at some laundry. She would probably think you were nuts. Laundry? What about it? A lot of things that might inspire you don't sound so interesting, but you can see something that changes you, astonishes you in a split second. He goes on to say, people ask me all the time, how do I know what to take a picture of? That age old question. And I answer, whatever it is that makes you stop, photograph that. This book is full of these ideas, of prompts that are easy to read, one in and one out, that are going to absolutely change the way that you think about your photography. It certainly did for me, <laughs> and all of this in a child's book. And you can see, I was so impressed with it, I actually bought my own copy. <laughs> so so that's, that's one book. A little known fact, here's a bit of trivia for you photographic eye fans, is that when I was trying to think of the, a name for the channel, I was looking through all the books and stuff like that, and uh, I just kind of got, oh, because Alex Kilby talks about photography, um, sounds, <laughs> sounds a bit rubbish. And I found this book in my collection, The Photographer's Eye. I thought, that makes a fantastic name for a channel. We'll have that. Uh, and then as the more, I think, uh, astute amongst you may have noticed, it's not called The Photographer's Eye, it's called The Photographic Eye, because when I went to go name the channel, um, I misnamed it. <laughs> so there's, there's, there's the origin story. Now, this is a book that I purchased uh, of course, a while ago now, but it's by the um, Museum of Modern Art, written by John Zwakowski. This particular book breaks things down into ideas, like the frame. Here is a whole section about how to use framing within your photography. But again, not in a tutorial sort of way of like, this is how you frame things, this is how you do it. This is showing you images of various photographers and the way that they are using the frame of the camera. This is what this book is about. It's about giving some visual stimulus of suggestions. Like this is a concept and this is the way that many different photographers have approached it. And it's that reason that this book 
absolutely, I think is one of the, the must reads for anybody who wants to improve their photography. The reason that I, I talk about these books like this, that I get so excited is because it, it, it is an unfortunate thing that photography has so much depth and it has so much breadth. And I, I appreciate not everybody wants to know about the history of photography. Then that is a very niche topic in things. But the more that you look at the photographs outside of what you are normally told about, normally, you know, that you see on, on Instagram or, or the tutorials or the people who are doing the workshop circuits, you know, the same names seem to crop up time and time again, who are all teaching you how to use off camera flash. They're not really feeding your visual library with, with images that are fresh. I've used the analogy in the past where you know, people are talking about having this pool of, of inspiration that we all drink from. And much like the water hole in the African savannah, lots of animals come to it and eventually it shrinks and shrinks and shrinks because it doesn't get any rain and it just becomes a sloppy, muddy mess. What these books are doing are giving you ideas, giving you outlets to feed that pool of inspiration so it always remains fresh. Then there is a book that this is the actual dog-eared cover that I've, I've, I've had since I was getting started in photography. This was a set work that we had as students called The History of Photography, An Overview. Now, it was only published just a couple of years before I started studying photography. So I think it's, it's, it's testament to how important and, and great this book is that it was on a set list already. Now, as you may have guessed, it says this is the history of photography. And one of the, the great things, or I say great, it's not great actually, it's one of the awful things that I often come up against when I'm you know, meeting people in, in the photography world is that they often don't really know, you know many photographers beyond maybe some of the, you know, the greatest hits, as it were. And, and I say that's awful. I don't mean it's awful that they haven't been, taken the time to find out. I mean, it's awful that it is so hard to find photographers whose work you're not sure of, who you've never heard of, because how can you go looking for somebody if you don't know who you're looking for? And this book kind of solves that problem. This is my first introduction to photography as a wider thing. It ranges right from, you know, the very first photographs, you know, Nietzsche and, and Daguerre and all that sort of thing. And it doesn't go through the history of photography chronologically, talking in very dry terms about, you know, Fox Talbot and then the cyanotype and all those kind of things. It flits through regarding concepts. So social documents, so this is social documents, photography and social culture. And it goes through people like Eugene Age, and I'm just, I'm flicking through here to see who's, who else we've got. Edward Curtis, he might be a bit more unfashionable these days. Um, Dion Arbus is in there. So you can see, jumping around, showing you, or the reader, i.e. me, a whole world of photography that is just waiting there to be explored. If you're looking to broaden your interest in photography, to be given some rabbit holes to go and fall down, this is great. And all these books here are actually, for once when I'm showing books on the channel, they're, re they're pretty affordable. I mean, this is like 10 bucks, right? So instead of going and buying a, you know, a cappuccino or whatever it is, do yourself a favor, buy this book and just enjoy somebody giving you an entree into the, the world of photography. So in this book here, this is Letting Go of the Camera by a, a guy called Brooks Jensen. This is just text. These are musings and thoughts about photography in a way that gives much like the, the, the I, I think the, the written equivalent of kind of often what I talk about, that, you know, that gear's not particularly important and, and how we can use other ideas to, to influence our photography. I'd certainly like the ones that when he talks about, you know, going to a workshop, how to make the most of a workshop, how it's ridiculous to think that you're gonna make a living being an artist and things of that nature. So some of the, 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 the talking, some of the advice in here, it's a little bit tongue in cheek, but it makes you stop and think. And, it, and, and, and it's enjoyable again to dip in and out of. They're short essays, each one stands alone. And, you know, this is a man who understands about photography. 
not in a necessarily a kind of very you know serious earnest sort of way I've, you know, all these people who write about photography they're, they're all serious about their photography but they also understand that you can, you can make it more accessible by just you know having a having a bit of laugh from time to time so that's letting go of camera by books jensen and he does actually have a there's a whole website there they have around this and also believe another bit of t- bit trivia is that it, he runs the longest running photography podcast in the world. So there we go, you know, so Brooks Jensen. That's an investment of 50 bucks, maybe, right? You could spend that on a lunch. But looking at those books will give you a huge boost to taking photography, the photography that you already have, and just thinking about it from a slightly different perspective, getting some fresh ideas, you know, and just reinvigorating you. I talked about Joel Meyerwitz earlier, and if you want to see how to create photographs like the great master himself, check out this video over here. Thank you ever so much for watching, and I will see you again soon.